Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a wire removal for the paper airplane to go from something like this to something like this. So when they shot this footage, they used a little bit of movie magic and they used some string to hold up the paper airplanes because you can't actually have the airplane stay up in real life. So because of that, we'll have to take it into After Effects and take out the wires and you can start a new project anywhere, save, and you'll have our shot. So once you bring, to, so once you bring it into After Effects, it will make a pre-composition and it will size it to match your composition in Premiere. So After Effects actually has a wire removal plugin. The problem is, is that our airplane moves around so much is that if we were to try to track these lines individually it would be very difficult and we would have to go frame by frame so wire removal probably isn't the best option for us right now instead what i'm planning on doing is doing a garbage mat around the wires entirely so we can start naming this our background and then what i need is the airplane by itself. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer and call it our airplane layer. And what I'm going to do is create a garbage mat around that airplane. So if I go to my pen tool, I can kind of create a bit of a garbage mat around it. And this garbage mat is going to have to change every now and then. So I'm going to have to keyframe the mask. So if I hit the M button three times, I can turn on the mask path. And over here, it looks good. Basically, what I'm looking for is parts where it intersects with the airplane or the fans. I want to keep the border around it brown at all times. So I can select this and make it a little wider and it'll automatically make keyframes for me down here in my timeline below. And the, the trick is to keep the border as close to the airplane as possible without having it touch. Now here where her hand comes in is going to be a bit trickier and what I'll probably do is create some more. So if I press the G button, I can create some more points here and adjust it to how her hand comes in. And when her hand intersects with the airplane, I want to cut off her hand as much as possible, but it's not absolutely necessary that I rotoscope every single little bit of her hand. I just don't want to cut off the airplane. For example, right here. So that looks about good. So I want to I want to feather it a little bit. It's not too important to feather it, and I want to solo this layer. So now what I can do is I can go into my Luma key and drag that onto my footage. So I want to key out the darker. So once I'm here, I can increase the threshold. And slowly, I can get my airplane by itself. I might want to feather the edges a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Here's where her hand comes in, which is okay. But once we get the airplane by itself, we're good. So now we have an, a layer with just the airplane and a layer of the background. So now we need to create a layer that gets rid of the wires. So to do that, I need to grab a piece of footage from before her hand comes in of a empty slate. So what I can do is I can go into our background 
and find where before her hand comes in, which looks good about there. And I can press Option, Open Bracket, and I can File, Edit, Copy, and then I can bring my cursor back to the beginning of the footage, and I want to press Option, Command, V. And what that will do is it will place my footage uh, where my cursor is rather than just paste randomly. So I need to make the comp match in size. So the scale goes back to 50. And I need to match the background with the background of where my camera is. So if I take my opacity and I bring it down, and if I drag it around, I could see the chair in the background over there. Maybe I could bring my opacity down a bit more, maybe down to 30. So now I can see the light in the upper right needs to match up, and that looks good right about there. So now that our background's set, I want to press the Y button, and I want to take my anchor point, and I want to drag it over to this light. I want a very specific point on the light because later on I need to match up my footage. Because the camera moves, I need to match up the background with later in the shot. So I also want to go to time and freeze frame my footage so that, so that we only see it as a background plate and we don't see it as video. So now I want to keyframe my position and I want to keyframe my scale and I can do that with the P and the S button. And if I press the U button, it tells me everything that I have keyframed so far. So now, if I go to somewhere in the middle of the footage, I can see that my background has moved because the camera has moved. So as you remember before, I set my anchor point to this little corner of the light. So if I set my anchor point there, everything will scale from that point. So now I can just go to scale and I could scale it down to just the right size right there. And I can go even all the way to the end and I could see my light bulb still right there. And I could scale it down even more to match the scene. somewhere in that neighborhood. And I can go to the middle, and if, if things aren't matching perfectly, I can, I can adjust them. And somewhere here too. This doesn't need to be exact because all of the footage is a little bit blurry in the background and it doesn't matter all that much. But the general area is good enough. So once I have that, I can bring my opacity, hit the T button and bring my opacity up and I can bring that back to 100. And the next thing I need to do is that my footage from here covers the fans and pretty much everything else in the scene. So what I can do now is I can go to my pen tool again and I can drop my opacity once again and I can paint out the wires where I need them to be. So this will take a little bit of adjustment. So if I hit mask twice or three times, uh, I can turn on the mask path keyframes. So now I'm just gonna go through my footage and see where my mask doesn't match up and have it cover those wires. So again, you don't need to do every single frame, just maybe skip about 30 frames, and then if you see a frame that doesn't match up perfectly, then that's when you can uh, go in and do a bit more refined rotoscoping. So that looks about good. So now if I bring my, my opacity back up, the wires are gone, but now I have this big block in it. So if I go to my mask again, I can bring the feather, 
that will help me out a little bit. So it blends a lot better, but you can still see it. And so what I need to do now is I need to take the fans and make put them on top. So I'm going to duplicate my background again. And I'm going to call it my fans. <clears throat> and I want to bring that on top of my wire layer. So now with my fans layer soloed, I can do another Luma key. And this time I want to key out darker. And I want to key out some color as well. So I'll go color. And I want to take out some of this. And I'll just I'll duplicate this and I'll take out some of this as well. So now I'm left with a thing like this and I want to feather it a little bit to make it a bit easier on the eyes. Okay, so that looks good. Now when I unsolo the fans, I have this, which is good, but it still needs some more work because I can still see all the activity going on back there. Also, my mask is going to need a little adjustment as well. For example, you can see a little bit of my mask over in the fans, so I need to adjust it to stay off of the outside ring of the fans, which should be all right. So come back and it should be off the fans. Okay, so now let's take a look. So I can see my wire right here. So now I need to adjust this mask to come down and cover the wire. So I can still see my mask a very small amount in here. So what I'm going to want to do is do a brightness and contrast on it. And I want to keyframe both the brightness and the contrast. And right here, if I hold down the Option key, I can go in smaller increments. So if I bring it up a small amount, that should do it there. Um, over here at the beginning, probably a zero is good. And I can't really tell anything there. So if I bring it along, still can't really see it too much. Can't really see it too much. And it's a little dark there. So maybe I'll, if I hit the E button, I can see my brightness and contrast here in the timeline. Uh, maybe I'll put another keyframe there. Maybe I'll adjust it a little bit. And by the end of the clip, it's a little too dark, so I'll brighten it up a little bit more. There we go. And that's about it. Everything looks to be working. Let's take a look at it one last time. And there we have it. So everything looks good. All the wires are gone. Go ahead and give it some more practice on some other shots that you see in the footage and practice with some footage that you shoot yourself. Practice with some footage that your friend shoots because the more practice you have, the better you'll get.